Hey there, Ben Lipper here. So I've just been kind of playing around with some PTOs and basically the idea is if you have one motor and you want to control more than one mechanism with it, how do you do it? So this can be valuable for a number of reasons. One is like obviously you only have six motors. Maybe you have seven things you want to spin. How do you do that? Or maybe you have enough motors, but you'd actually like two motors on your intake and two motors on your catapult rather than one and one. And so how could you do that? So let me just show you kind of some things I've been playing around with. This one is probably the simplest. You look at it, you're like, it's a set of gears. But check this out. If I spin this gear this way, I'm gonna, I'm gonna spin this gear. So if I, oops, sorry, I'm gonna spin this gear. Did I get it right? No, I had it right the first time. If I spin this gear, you see how that this second gear doesn't spin? Oh, no, I'm, there we go. It's kind of getting a little stuck. But this, there we go. See how it just kind of rides on top there? There we go. Now, now it's just getting angry with me. It's getting stage fright. But if I spin it the other way, it forces them to spin together. So I can spin it this way, and they don't spin. You need like some kind of upper hard stop here. You'd imagine a pin sticking out to hold that in, right? Um, and then you spin them the other way, and they'll lock together, and they'll spin. And so that's kind of cool. Oh, I see what's happening. Um, this would be useful if imagine, there we go. So see, like it doesn't spin it, and now it spins it. It was getting caught on this upper lip. That's why I was angry before. There we go. So it doesn't spin it, doesn't spin it. So this would be, say, I'm spinning my intake forward. You know, I don't want to be catapulting as I'm intaking a ball, so I'm spinning my intake forward. This guy's attached to my intake. I'm not spinning my catapult. You see that? that would, my catapult would be this gear. And then, say, I spin it the opposite direction. Now do you see how I'm spinning my intake backwards to spin my catapult forward? And it doesn't matter my intake spinning backwards because the ball's not in it anymore. But what if the ball was still in it? Now check this guy out. And this doesn't even have pneumatics yet. Now I've got two gears, and you see how if I spin this center gear, I'm going to spin this center gear. If I spin it this direction, it catches that gear. This one it rocks this way, and it catches this gear. Isn't that cool? So nothing super fancy here. We're just able to change, you know, maybe this is my catapult and this is my intake. Now I can only spin my intake forward, and I can only spin my catapult forward. Now I have to hope that nothing gets jammed and I need to spin it backward. But now I have the ability to do so. Do you see that? All right, so that's pretty cool. You're like, Ben, how are these built? Let me just show you real quick. And then I want to show you if you need to be able to spin both forward and backward, how you do that. But this is a super simple build. Basically, all I've done is I've taken like, you know, a gear here and I kind of stuck it on here. And you're like, all right, this is cool. You know, I can kind of spin these pieces together. I like how that looks. And then you're just going to have another gear. I've got another gear kind of on here. I spaced it up one because this is going to be like one thick here. So you kind of see how that works. And then all I'm gonna do is I'll just place it in here. And the way you place it in is you kind of line it up. So like, that's a good lineup. See how like, you know, they're kind of sitting there. It works, it does, oops, this one is the one you spin. It's not spinning and then it's locked together and it's spinning. Um, if you space them apart too much, so like for example, let me get this spacing wrong on purpose. There we go. See how here it like falls through the hole and you're like, whoa, what's going on here? I like kind of put it through there and it just like falls on the other side of the gear. That's not what you want. If it's like too close, um, it'll look something like this. And you have like a triangle of gears and then it like locks up and weird things happen. So you kind of space it properly. That's about right. That looks good to me. Obviously you could do this with different sizes of gears. I just want to show you the principle here. This one is made very similarly, same deal, except for this, instead of being a one by three, check this out. It's one of these pieces, see? And so then you stick that guy on here and now it can go side to side based on what it needs. It's kind of like a little Mickey Mouse. Take that Mickey Mouse, stick it with these two gears. Eh, I stuck it too high, didn't I? No, there we go. Just like so. And now we're nicely shifting between the two. All right, that's cool. Now say that I, for some reason, have two mechanisms that need to spin both forward and backward. Maybe I've got, you know, my drivetrain and I want to make it so I can disengage my drivetrain and instead start spinning um, my intake. I, you know, I want a four motor intake, four motor drivetrain. How can I do that? Now, that would be something like this. And there's lots and lots of ways to build this. So this is just like one real hacky example. But the idea is if I am, sp I'm going to spin this bottom gear with my motor, right? And you see, as I do that, this gear spins. This gear, sorry, this gear over here is spinning, right? That's pretty cool. And then if I shift this pneumatic cylinder over, now you see how I'm spinning the other gear? So that's how PTOs work. This is kind of a, 
I guess, you know, how large a uh, normal PTO would work in a Vex IQ robot. There are some other ones where you actually shift the gears in and out, so kind of like this. Um, those are a little more advanced and a little trickier to get working. I personally like this one. Personally, though, I really don't like these at all. So, like, not gonna lie, I don't use any of these in my robots. I think I tried one once and it was like a lot of work. It was just way better if I just designed my robot so I didn't need these. These are kind of complicated. They don't work perfectly. But if you get them working, they can work fantastic. And these are honestly the secret to a lot of really, really high-level robots. So hopefully, hopefully that is useful. If you're looking for some robots, especially if you're looking at this and you're like, Ben, that is so complicated. Um, I've got a bunch of robots that don't use these. So there's a video here of a, like, actually really advanced robot that doesn't need it. And then here's another video of a much easier to build robot also doesn't need it. But if you're like, hey, that's cool, Ben, but that's a little too much for me, go ahead and click either of those. And I cannot wait to see what you build this year.